Anyway, well, Ashwin is telling us that Biocon is a buy from these levels. That's technically, but let's understand fundamentally what's going on with the company. Remember, the numbers were subdued in the past quarter, but to decode those numbers, we have with us uh, Ms. Kiran Majumdar Shah. Good morning, ma'am. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for speaking to CNBC TV 18. Let's speak about the small molecules business, since that's a sizable part of your business. Uh, it had a weakish uh, quarter. You've seen the rupee appreciate a tad bit more. Um, What's the outlook going ahead? Can we see a bit of a recovery in the second half of this fiscal? As you know, we have a, a strong portfolio of uh, statins and immunosuppressants, which is really our mainstay in small molecules. And although we've had a small quarter, uh, if you were to adjust for INDAS, which was a one-time migration last year, uh, we've seen a 5% decline. Uh, in our small molecules business, but we believe that uh, this can recover in the coming quarters. Uh, we've also been impacted by a very weak dollar, and since most of our small molecules business is dollar denominated, we've had, we have been impacted uh, in, in, in this respect. Um, but I think what I'd like to really focus on is our biologics business. You know, we've seen a very strong recover, you know, growth this quarter, a 15% year-on-year growth. Uh, uh, and if you adjust for uh, INDAS, it is actually a 27% uh, year-on-year growth, largely driven by our insulin business, uh, you know, which I think is a very welcome uh, sign for us. Uh, going forward also, we are very hopeful that our biologics business will continue to drive growth momentum. So this is an area which we are really, really focusing on because we are uh, poised to uh, get a lot of regulatory approvals in many emerging markets. Uh, both for trastuzumab and uh, insulins, both recombinant human insulin and insulin glard gene. So we expect that uh, uh, we will perform pretty strongly in terms of biologics uh, for this particular fiscal. Branded formulations has had a bit of a, uh, a, a, a poor quarter, largely impacted by GST, and uh, we expect this to recover going forward. So we are seeing a recovery in Q2 and going forward. But as you know, our branded formulations business has also seen a, a significant rationalization of products. So in terms of overall growth, uh, we expect it to be in low double digit. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Shaw, hi. Thank you very much for joining in. This is Ekta. Uh, just wanted to take forward that point with regards to the biologics business because that's up 15% plus you're planning to launch insulin glargine in the UAE as well. Can you give us some guidance in terms of where the biosimilar launches will be in emerging markets and what might the guidance for FY18 be? So UAE, of course, uh, is a market where we have launched our insulin glargine under our brand name Glaricon. But as you know, these are very these are not uh, huge markets. So I would not uh, really uh, look at these as big growth opportunities, apart from the optics, which is very positive. But I think the the big uh, growth opportunities that we have in biologics is really in the LATAM region. Uh, of course, some of the Middle East markets and Turkey and Russia and some of these other CIS markets. So I think that's where really we focus on in terms of our emerging market opportunities. Okay. Uh, you have the Malaysian facility which came on stream and that's the reason why your finance costs spiked this quarter along with your depreciation costs. Can you give us or provide us some color in terms of how these two parameters are going to pan out for the remaining part of FY18? And when you talk about the Malaysian facility, what kind of regulatory approvals are we working with on that plant? So, um, you know, we have uh, shared with you in the past that the impact of carrying costs of Malaysia are estimated at $48 million per annum. And, uh, you know, these, uh, and so they are equally distributed. So we have seen an impact of $12 million uh, pertaining to the Malaysia facility this quarter. And it will remain that way uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, having said that, we are, uh, you know, expecting to start supplies to emerging markets from Malaysia because we have been inspected uh, by several emerging market regulators and we hope that this business will start uh, this, this fiscal. Uh, so that's the expectation in terms of, of, of the Malaysia facility.
So what exactly, ma'am, uh, would be the potential revenue coming in from this Malaysian facility once it starts uh, going on in the optimum capacity? So I think one thing we've already shared with you is that uh, the offtake agreement that we signed with the Malaysian authorities is to the tune of $20 million per annum. So that has already kicked off. And we hope that, uh, you know, we will see a significant uh, bolster to that number uh, by starting supplies to some of the other markets such as, you know, Mexico, Brazil, some of the Middle East markets uh, and so on and so forth. So I think that's the expectation that we have. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, you know, coming to the Sinjin uh, business, the revenue was up around 6 odd percent this time. How exactly is the recovery panning out post the fire which took place in the Q3 of FI17? And if you can provide some color in terms of what the contracts might be looking for Sinjin like in FI18? So yes, I'd certainly like to share that with you. Actually, Sinjin numbers have shown a modest growth, but as I mentioned, a large part of their chemical development business was impacted by the fire. And this is now showing recovery and we are already uh, seeing a good order position for their ChemDev business uh, in Q2 and onwards. Now when you look at some of their other businesses which continue to do very well, which were not affected by the fire, were their dedicated centers. And uh, these include of course the BMS and Amgen uh, centers uh, which are really the, the, the front runners in this business. And what is good news is that Amgen has actually uh, scaled up and significantly expanded their present activities at uh, uh, Sinjin, uh, which is going to really pan out very positively for the rest of the year. Okay, you also have an, a contract which I think you uh, got from a Japanese uh, MNC this time That's for right. Sinjin. But That's you can't right. share numbers, so can you? I can't share numbers at this stage, but it is a multi-year contract. So that's a good uh, piece of news for Sinjin because they, they open their account uh, with a very, very good uh, opportunity. Okay. Just a quick last question before we wrap up the conversation, uh, Mrs. Shaw. Uh, if you could just leave us with some guidance with regards to what's happening on the biosimilar filing, uh, with regards to remediation of the Bangalore facility at this point in time, when the when you could probably reinvite the EU inspectors and uh, the eight observations with the USFT. If you could just pull, put all of that in perspective for us. Sure. So as far as the EMA inspection is concerned, uh, you know, as I mentioned to you, we will be ready for a reinspection. Uh, you know, by the end of this uh, coming quarter. So I think we would be ready for inspection, but then it all remains to be seen how quickly they can come and re-inspect us, and that's up to the regulators themselves. But we are actually, the, the, the process of seeking re-inspection uh, is something that we are addressing very expeditiously, and we are very confident that we will be able to seek a re-inspection uh, by the end of this uh, quarter. Um, and therefore, we expect uh, you know the the regulatory inspection to to happen if if we are lucky soon thereafter. Uh, in terms of the U.S. FDA uh, uh, you know observations, uh, these are not critical observations. We have responded with uh, uh, a, a CAPA uh, to the U.S. FDA, and we are just hoping that uh, you know these will be uh, received favorably, and we hope that you know everything will uh, proceed as per plan. Okay. All right, Mrs. Shaw, we're going to let you go on that note. Thank you very much for joining in and speaking with us. Nigel Manglam, over to you guys.